Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Today we are in Kinston, North Carolina, and we are at the CSS Noose. This is the only full-scale replica of Confederate ironclad in the world. And we have the opportunity today to tour it, and you get to come with me. So I'm gonna show you around, but right after this station, identification. The CSS Noose was one of four ironclad boats built by the Confederate Navy in North Carolina. She was the sister ship to the well-known CSS Albemarle that was stationed in Plymouth on the Roanoke River. Hipped to get to Newburn, the noose ran aground on a sandbar and was stuck for a month. Returning to her dock in May of 1864, she remained there until the fall of March when she was called into action. Following the Battle of Wise Fork on March the 9th through the 11th, 1865, the Confederate Commander General Braxton Bragg decided to evacuate Kinston in order to save his force. Captain Joseph Price was ordered to use the CSS noose to hold off the coming Union forces, and then he scuttled the ship to avoid her being captured. The crew of the noose did just that, keeping the Union Army at bay until the evacuation was complete. The gunboat was then set on fire and sunk in the river. The noose remained on the bottom of the river for nearly 100 years before being recovered and put on the display as a state historic site in 1964. This is a video of when they brought the noose out of the river. Okay, directly under the gun deck would have been the boiler room. This is a steam power plant. It was consisted of a firebox, a boiler, and two engines. And the propellers powered the CSS noose. The propulsion system used a type of boiler called a fire tube boiler. Coal or wood fed into the firebox created the heat to produce steam that powered the engines. During the summer, the temperatures in the boiler room would have been upwards of 135 degrees. This would have been the galley. The galley is where the cooks will prepare the meals for the crew. Sailors aboard the CSS News received government rations similar to those provided to, by the Army in the field. This iron ladder would have been the, the ladder that would take the crew through that small portal to the upper deck. This would also have been the crew's quarters. The crew on the noose, they constructed bunk beds for sleeping, but evidence also showed that there were perhaps some bunks. This is a dream of one man to rebuild a full scale ironclad he actually used the exact same blueprints that were used on the original here are some of the bunks in the cruise quarters and this is the second iron ladder that leads to the gun deck
And this is the very back of the boat, known as the aft. This is where the rudder was at. This room was the projection room. This is where the shells would have been stored. Now we are below the water line and that's for safety purposes. All conceived by the ship's builders because shells that would have been fired at the, at the ship would have been fired from above. So the projectiles as well as the powder room that we are in now would have been below the waterline, all about safety. This is the officers' quarters. This was the sleeping quarters for the officers. The officers spent little time on board, if not assigned to duties. When the boat was tied up, the officers lodged into a nearby house. They ran it and during the day, the officers engaged in all manners of work from drilling gun crews to overseeing construction and maintenance. And there are some of the plans and diagrams of the ship itself. And we are on our way to the ship's captain's room. This room served not only as the captain's sleeping quarters, but also for his workspace, where he tackled many administrative tasks that he faced. It is said that the captain would not likely to have done too much work in his cabin since this compartment would have been unbearably hot for much of the North Carolina year. He probably found a more comfortable location to complete his administrative tasks and write reports when he was not directly overseeing the crew, perhaps from a house on shore. And here is the ship's workshop. Of course, all of this is iron, or would have been iron, made from flattened railroad iron. And those are the ports that would swing out of the way in order for the uh, cannon to be exposed and fire. Well, this is just the reproduction. We are fixing to go down the street just a few blocks and see what's left of the real thing. Let's go. This boat is registered as a real marine vessel in dry dock. Now, what makes that different than any other type of museum? Well, because it is a registered vessel in dry dock and it has to be inspected every year, this is how they can get away without having bathrooms on board. The building that the CSS News is housed in. This is the original CSS News. As it is today, it was burned and it set in the river, in the mud for over 100 years. And this iron framework above the top kind of represents what it would have looked like 
when it was a hole. And all of this would have been below the water line. The casemate would have been on the very top, this angle down, just as what we're looking at right now, that is the casemate. And this is part of the original casemate. It consisted of two inches of vertical iron plating two inches of horizontal iron plating, four inches of vertical oak planking, five inches of horizontal pine planking, and 13 by 12 inch pine timbers. This is one of the four vents that would have been on the deck that allowed fresh air to get down to the lower parts of the ship the gun deck as well as down to the gallery and cruise quarters. This is exactly what it would have looked like when it was floating in the water, only about roughly a foot above the water line. This is the cross section of how those timbers were. There are those oak beams, this 10 to 13 inches, to four inches of pine, to four inches of oak, the two inches of horizontal and vertical iron. And these are original shells that would have been used on the noose. Kinston CSS News Museum. They have a children's center. While you're here looking at CSS News, your kids can come over and pretend they're cooking over an open fire or they're staying in a officer's tent. How cool is that? Okay, I hope you have enjoyed our trip to Kinston, North Carolina to see the original CSS news and the full-scale replica. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give me a big old thumbs up. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. But until next time, y'all have a good day.